Hello everyone, this is Kurode giving you a shoutcast in a game between Fnatic's TT1 versus MYM's X Lord here on Tall Dream um, Tall Dream Altar. We have <laughs> always just interesting comments from the players. Anyways, we have X Lord spawning as the light blue Zerg player here on the top right hand side of the map. Meanwhile, we have TT1 spawning as the green Protoss over here on the top left hand side of Tall Dream Altar. Tall Dream Altar, one of the larger macro maps which play very interestingly in that um, a lot of early con aggression can be placed down early on. Unlike Shakura's Plateau where there is a ramp leading into your natural expansion and a ramp leading into your main base, that is not the case here on Tall Dream Altar. So because of that, and because of the multiple entrances in by Reapers over here as well, and then Cliffwalkers and Overlords, and just this rather wider opening, we see a lot of early aggression by players. TT1 pretty much just doing a standard build. Meanwhile, Xlord doing a standard build as well. No cheese coming in at all that I can see. We'll see if we see a Forge coming in from TT1. And the Forge should determine whether or not any um, any shenanigans will be coming from either of these two players. We do have what a, a currently a probe just getting chrono boosted. Nothing really to write and talk about. As TT1 sitting on a decent a number of minerals and just currently chrono boosting. He's waiting to see if a hatchery will be placed down. And meanwhile, the probe is just hiding over here. And we have a spawning pool being placed very very far away so by the time that probe does come back and take a look that um, that one spawning pool should more than be halfway to maybe even two-thirds of the way done tt1 now gonna stick his head in try to figure out if a spawning pool has been placed down looks doesn't see an extractor at any location there and he finally i believe yes he spots the spawning pool there and now getting that forge instead the forge already about halfway completed so photon cannon should be coming in as well as a hatchery has been placed down here so no pylon block there as we have the spawning pool of now completed 27 seconds will allow for some zerglings perhaps some queens will be trained up instead as the queen does allow for a more stronger macro yeah queen now being trained and no overlord just quite yet currently sitting on two larva finally training up that overlord now and we'll see what happens later on as we are going into the extractor is it for the trick or is he actually actually going for the extractor now and trying to get some additional gas Back over here, TT1 is getting up that Nexus, going for a Photon Cannon as well. I expect to see a Gateway. Um, I'm not actually sure how to see this Gateway. I know a Gateway will be placed down here. I guess the Siren X Core will go down here. And then a Zealot can sit right there. And in comes a Drone. The Drone does block the Gateway just a little bit on that timing there. And finally comes in. The Photon Cannon is up. It is up just a second too late. And the drone is able to sneak by and now get proper scouting information. Pretty much all the information he needs to see. And one of the critical things to keep track of is the amount of energy on this Nexus. Nexus now getting close to 75 energy as double assimilators now coming in as well. The drone knowing that there's pretty much not much is going to be happening over here. And now we can see the probes being transferred over off into this location as well. Now chrono boosting um, a Nexus double chrono, double chrono boosting. And trying to get a stronger economy going. I'm wondering why TT1 wasn't trying to keep down his energy lower. And perhaps go for a stronger economy throughout the majority of the game. Gateway now completed. Cyber Next Core should be coming in soon. And yeah, it looks like the probe now making its way over. Where is that Cyber Next Core? No, yeah, there's that Cyber Next Core there. And now perhaps going to place another pylon here at some point. As the extractor has been completed. And TT1 just going to be able to get a little bit of scouting information on this hatchery. Or this nexus for a little while longer. Harvester count 28 probes versus 25 drones. No one will really be able to deal any damage at all. The Zergman is trying to take down those rocks. Those rocks have a long way to go. As the Queen now spawning larva at two locations. And now finally trying to connect the two hatcheries with creep tumors. Allowing for faster movement speed between the two locations. And we now have that one pylon currently warping in here. Another pylon warping in here. So... TT1 no longer supply lock. He should be able to start getting some sentries. And he should be massing up a lot of sentries. That's the only reason why you go for double gas this early. Sentries do train up rather quickly. Only 37 seconds for each time. 
or for each unit 37 seconds meaning that you essentially need two um two gas collectors two assimilators in order to keep up that production in addition to also getting the level one weapons upgrade for some reason he is not chrono boosting the forge instead just trying to get as many of those centuries out and now going into additional gas play as well so we're going to be running off of four gas that is going to be a very strong gas economy as we are also going into a robotics facility so this is your not your average build at all there's not that many production buildings just a lot of centuries so far and we are getting that warp gate research so i'm assuming at some point probably within in about 20 or 30 seconds we should be getting in some additional gateways and that should time it just about right so that those additional gateways will be able to upgrade into warp gates and be able to push out in addition to a couple of these colossi coming off of this robotics facility there's those gateways that i was mentioning just now tt1 really practicing this build the timing on it so that when the gateway or when the cybernetic the when th this cybernetics core is finished researching finish researching warp gate he will be able to upgrade those additional buildings as well level one weapons upgrade about to be completed we may even get the armor upgrades as well since it is being chrono boosted out this one pylon most likely will get taken down in just a moment as there are spying crawlers on that front door we still do not see wow going in for six additional gateways so yeah so it is going to be a seven gate push with the robotics facility armor upgrades now coming online zergling able to just test that front door and then pull back once more the armor upgrades still being chrono boosted there as another hatchery or sorry a layer now being upgraded to tier two layer um Baneling's Nest and also Spawning Pool there. Level 1 weapons upgrade, level 1 armor upgrade as well. So it is going to be a lot of claw attacks. So those Zerglings are going to be the main damage dealer. Perhaps some Banelings as well. As those sentries will need to be very, very careful. Uh, one's, uh, perhaps a sentry now going to try to push its way out. Clean up this Zergling here. Be able to easily take it down. The Zergling doesn't stand a chance when it's holding position like that. And down it goes. We can see that all of these gateways are now upgraded into warp gates. The robotics facility was chrono boosting out in a Mortal. And now more stalkers are pushing out. So TT1 going to be put I'm doing a timing push with these units now. And we'll see how much damage will really be able to be dealt. These Zerglings are going to be able to um, take down all of these sentries or be able to spot these sentries, immortals, and stalkers as they're trying to make a move. And all the spine crawlers are now going to relocate. They do take 12 seconds in order to reroute. Um spore crawlers take six seconds. Spine crawlers take twelve. And that was one in the most recent patch update as now the Stalkers and Immortals are just continuing to make their way out. Banelings are now being morphed in as well and the timing is going to have to be very, very careful. We can see that there are Zerglings perhaps trying to do a flank as well as the units are moving out. A probe does spot a couple of those Zerglings. One pylon should get completed. Another pylon perhaps should be warping in right here as a new wave of Stalkers now warping in as well. So you can see Stalkers and Zealots continuing to warp in. Another pylon now warping in there as I mentioned earlier. And it looks like this push is about to happen. Such a large army from TT1. Banelings and Zerglings now trying to engage. And we'll see what is going to be happening. There is only one Immortal. So that Immortal has to be very, very careful. There is one unit there. And now that Immortal with that range of 5 is not going to be able to get that much damage in. Perhaps the Force Fields will go down. And you can see in, down goes one, some of those units. Zerglings now coming in. The Immortal able to blast off and get off... Um, get off a lot of damage but he should really be focusing down on those spine crawlers instead we are gonna have a drop of banelings instead so this is gonna be a baneling drop play trying to get as much damage as possible and it looks like tt1 simply getting um losing so many of his forces there are gonna be two spine crawlers left army wise though tt1 now with reinforcements once again continuing to push and the benefits of warp gates very very apparent being able to bring home field advantage straight into the battlefield there a force field there to try to protect that one low hit point sentry from being able to get flanked and x lord is desperately in trouble infestation pit production banding zerglings trying to keep up on top of his macro all of these drones now trying to run away they should be um, instead morphing into spine crawlers a lot lot earlier only five spawning crawlers the immortal was even focusing down zerglings instead of spine crawlers and still able to get a lot of damage there and there's the gg 
by X Lord. So TT1 playing a very, very impressive game here on Tall Dream Altar. Um, the last couple of games I have seen from um, Fnatic's TT1, he felt kind of he felt kind of confused and he felt like he didn't have as much confidence in his game. Um, but this time, TT1 really practicing the game, really uh, playing a very solid game and able to take the victory on Tall Dream Altar. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay.